Now let's have a seat. How's it looking now? In between. It's really good. Cool. This is as precise as cooking. Baking. Right. He bakes brown right. Yeah. Right there. right there. So now we can't pour that in yet, so you gotta come over here. You gotta take my water and you gotta clean this. So tap you have to use tap water, water. you can use sink water, but you have to use this to take that. Now keep it away from your feet. Because it's gonna drip the sun. Put your yeah. Go ahead, pour it in. Yep, now stop. Now turn it upside down and drop it. There you go. I'll give that back to you. It is flat on it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to show you. Now come over here. I stick, it, salsa. stick it right in there. Remember, and smush it down with the, with the stopper. Ahead. Then use the stopper to push it down. There you go. Yeah, you take the down. Set it down. Now, I want you to take one of these. Hold those in your hand. There's a pair of forceps right there. The tweezers. The tweezers. tweezers. There you go. Try to get one only. Yep. You got a whole bunch of them. Yep. Oh, you gotta be careful about how you touch it though, yep. Skylar. Mm -hmm. Hold it on the edges. Take your fingers like this. See, I'm holding on the it. Sides. Hold it just like that. And now now take your forceps. The oh, there. There you go. Nice. See when you hold it, see how it popped up a little bit? Yeah. Same thing happened to yours. So grab one of them. Okay. Then hand me the rest of them so we don't lose them. Blow on it Blow to on make it. sure there's it's no just more. one. Yep, just one. Now what side goes up? Which side? The smooth side or the rough side? The rough side. There okay. you go. Good memory. Oops. Oh, yeah. it. okay. Okay. So oh, it's windy. Is that the rough side? Hold on to it for just a second until he gets back. Yep. Yeah. Let's, make, so let's have a look. That's your rough side. Yep. So put that on. Oops. Oops. Okay. Those right <laughs> you gotta, well, you got to have <laughs> the other one ready because it's windy now, yeah. Lindy. Uh, we just get one more time to one. practice. There you go. You got it. Is there only one? Where's the rough side? Okay, hold, put, just hold Keep the thing. Yep. Get the other thing on top of it. Okay. The one in front of you. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Good job. Now, now you can slowly start pouring your. Well, you can put your whole sample in. We know that 150 works. But you got to do it at a certain uh, pace, right? Nah. Oh, okay. We're we good. Know. Okay. Yep. We knew that that fit. Okay, good. There you go. Scala, that could happen to anybody. Yep. It's actually good that you did that because when I go to do it, I could do the exact same thing. Now, now let's try it again. It so before you put it on, though, this time, I'm going to put my hand around it. So that the we'll, wind won't yeah, move grab, it. Grab your yeah, we're just having a windy day. You got one? There you go. You got it. Now, let me find Hold on one here. second before you look out. Okay, good. Other side, flip it. You're on the, the rough side. side. There you go. Actually, you probably just help yourself by getting it wet. There you go. Now, take that, put it on there. There you go. So now what do we need? We need more water. It's already rinsed, so you just got to go to 150. You want it on this side so you don't spill it on anything? You got it? No, no, no. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Yeah, you, you're just testing us. All the way in. There you go. 
Now stop. See, now we're not leaking. Ah! That was great though to do the leak because that's gonna. I'm I'm sure I can do the same thing. Yeah, if you lose any water, we gotta start over. Okay. Going down, Scatter? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Going down pretty fast. Dan, I should have started with this right at the beginning of the recording, but um, at some point when we're filling time, I, I'd like you to tell us the benefit of doing all this, right? We're testing our water, and what's our what's our hope at the end here to find out about our water? Okay. And you don't have to talk, talk about that now. You can wait till a better point. I know we're, we're mid-experiment. Uh, mid How we do it? Mid-sample. A little bit more. Got to get it all out. Scott. You're close. Filter. You got it. Now pull the top off. That's the type yeah, of algae. algae. Algae can be green, they can be blue green, yeah. they can be black. They now it's taco orange. time. They can, act like, they can look like orange paint. So, we find an opening. Now remember, you want to get right on the edge. You close it right up. There you go. Now pull it off. Now put your finger behind it with your other hand. Oh, 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 oh. There you go. Hold it like hold a taco. It. There you go. There you go. Got it? Because it's windy, windy. windy. yeah. So in your kitchen, it works better. Take this, slide it right in there. Slide it in the big taco. There you go. Now it's all protected, and we know who it belongs to because the label's here. We put the paper clip on it, so and then we drop it in here. We drop it right in there. What is this? Uh, silica gel. It's a drying agent. Have you ever got an electronic like the Game Boy or Uno you know, radio? Yeah. yeah. The thing that says don't eat. That's that. Don't eat it. They come in little <laughs> bags. So now. You've got this, it goes right here. The next thing here is your nose. So right here, two weeks prior to you guys going out and taking a sample, if you want to tell us anything about the area, let us know. Lots of rain, no rain. You sprayed it with Dyquat, you know it's used. You sprayed whatever plant, tell us. If this, if, if this thing came up two feet or went down two feet, anything that you want to let us know, no rain, say you hadn't been getting any rain, your well wasn't pumping and it went down three feet, anything that's happening right here around the area, let us know. So it could even be a bunch of ducks landed on it. A bunch of ducks for you guys is 20 or 30, not like a big lake, but if they're all using the bathroom in that, your ammonia levels are going up. So any kind of notes lets us know things. So you write your notes, the next thing is, these two pieces here are not part of our program. Rain and lake level. A lot of our volunteers on these big lakes, we have a lake level gauge, a staff gauge, surveyed in. If you had one and you wanted to write that down, you could. Rain, also. Some of our volunteers, they want to do from the last simple date to the next simple date. They put a rain gauge out behind their house. They monitor it. They add it up each day. They add that on there so we know from the last date to the next simple date and the next time how much rain fell right here at the lake that's interesting it's that'll be our phase two when we yeah time. but if you put that, on, add that on there what i suggest to do since you guys are very in to this spot some of my volunteers do it because they pay higher taxes they're just doing it for that reason some want a reason to get out on the water body they do it some care about the environment they do it all kinds of reasons depending on your reason i would take a copy of this and keep it in a notebook so we take a picture of it, make an electronic file, or take a, a regular copy, put it in a folder. That way, you always have your notes, and if you start doing rain, you will always have it. I'm going a lot. My area is Orange County to Key West, both coasts. I travel every day. So if you call me and you have a meeting two days ahead of time and you're asking for some stuff, I may not be in the office. If you have this, at least you have some record of what's going on. Or I send you a report and that report states some stuff, you can go back to your notes without calling me and seeing if those notes match up to something. So it's a good record for you to have if you want to. Once you've done that, you take it, you fold it, you put it right in here. One complete thing, nitrogen phosphorus, color and conductivity. Algae, your sheet here that's got your secchi, your water depth, your sun coat, your times, all right here in your notes. Put this in the freezer, Take it up to the extension office whenever you can, drop it in their freezer, and get a brand new set of bottles with a brand new desiccant, and go from there. 
these filter packets that we showed you, there's two of them in here. That's enough for one year. When you empty one of them, oh, wow. always get another one. They're at the extension office too. You won't need to get these every time, but again, at, at, at close to a half of a year, get an extra one because you're going to empty one of these. Uh, the bottles, the in. They're sterile. You can only use our bottles. The desiccants, you can only use our desiccants. These jugs, if you break one of them, you can drop it, or you want something smaller because you, you don't use a lot of the water. You can use anything that you drink. Tap water, rinse it, no soap. You can use Gatorade, milk, orange juice, apple juice, rinse it out, and you don't want to rinse it. So those go in there. And the last thing, everything's in that, you tap water, rinse everything. You take your funnel, let's get rid of this, so it won't blow away. You take, and so this scholar, so instead of you getting wet, you put your finger right here. It's a little hard to do, you don't have their big hands, but you put a little bit of water in it. That keeps it from running over, and then you just kind of dump it. That cleans it out. It's all ready to dry. Here's it to dry. This here, algae-free water. Put a little bit of water in it. And you notice, I dump this every time. I usually train people to do that, but some people are filtering 500. They're filtering more than that. And if you forget, to this neck, it will come into this tube, get in this pump, and kill it. So always dump everything however you guys only do a 150 you can do all three without dumping it because this holds a thousand milliliters but we rinse it we put it upside down so it can dry same thing with this we take our number two we take the lid off of it so it doesn't get frozen in it put a little bit of tap water in it take it dump it leave it the lid off of it so when you put it in here it can dry without getting like algae growth and stuff like that four steps go back in there we're leaving you guys a couple sets of bottles already in here for you to do multiple samples. Always keep two or three sets. And I'm going to leave you a gasket already in there. Now, I only come down every three months to get samples from this area. So I was here in June, so that's July, August, September. I'll be back in September. You can either do this, freeze it, and take it up there monthly and get new stuff. You have enough stuff to do it until I call you again and say you need to take it up there. How many bottles? You only need one. So you could go do you could go do August and September. Take this out of the freezer and put more in this. This can hold a lot. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, it's July. So, but with this, if you did, I'm going to leave you two so you have a spare. But I'll always keep a few of these. But like this one. When you turn one in, always get one. Oh, so okay. If, so you'll get one back when we if turn. If you do have this in the freezer, you don't want to take those samples up there until I call. Go out next month, take those samples, come back, take this out of the freezer, put those in it, put it back in the freezer. So this goes up to the extension center. Mm -hmm. We wait for you for those samples. No, all of it goes up. All, one, one complete He's going to be taking yeah. this one. I'm just going to tell you that. So say, say, but say. where's the algae filter? In here. They're in here. Oh, okay. And yeah. then what you're saying is you can add to that desiccant yeah. if we didn't take it yeah, in so every month is, to the... Is, this is July. I went and sampled. I put this in the freezer. And then we like have August. Dan's not going to be here until September. So I'm not. I'm just going to wait till it calls me two weeks out. And, and, and so I'm going to go out and I'm going to take uh, August's sample. So go take your set of bottles, take your samples, come back, take this out of the freezer, put August in that, put it back in the freezer. So now in the freezer, you've got July and August. September comes around, you go take your September sample, come back, take that out of the freezer, put September's in it. So when you're all said and done, you would have July, August, and September in the freezer, but just one of these. It would just be August in this case, because you're taking That's July. Like I'm taking this yeah. one. But this would be in there. You, you could have two sets, three sets. Okay. This will dry a whole okay. bunch of stuff. But since okay. everything's labeled, it can be added to. I know whose it is. Gotcha. Yep. Now, if you don't want to do that, and you get done today, say, I'm going to take this. But let's say you guys did it today, and I'm not here. You went out over here, you get your sample, and you said, you know what? The kitchen office is open. I've got time. Put this on a cooler of ice. Drive right up there. That's what I'd put love to do. Freezer. Just get it out of our, yeah. So show you what the are. Yeah. 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 Let their freezer do it. Yeah. Completely up to you. Okay. I'll take this one. Yes. Time. I'm going to put this here. So you have extra sets of bottles. You got a couple desiccants. All in there. Pencil, markers in there. Everything, this can be stored in a garage. It doesn't have to have a, a, a climate controlled environment. That's your set. The bottles, the desiccant, 
the filters are always there. If the funnel breaks, the pump wears out, you gotta call me to get it. Um, round it out, Dan was telling us where what happens to the water samples and then what, what will we find out? Let me give you guys that. That's my contact information. So, Lake Watch is set up to be for trend analysis. So, what we do is we look at data through time. So, one, one point in time doesn't tell us a lot. One point in one year, one point next year, doesn't tell us a lot. What we want to do is have this body in this program for 15 years, 20 years. I have some lakes that started in 1986, they have the same volunteer doing it. Some lakes have had 10 volunteers on that same lake since 1986. But we keep that data going through time so we can see what's changing through weather, dry periods, hurricanes, any kind of change in weather. People change. Right now, people are moving to the state of Florida like it's never happened before. Orlando, I heard this morning, is getting a thousand people per week in, moving towards Orlando. So that allows us to see how things are doing with time. You as an individual, what that data gives you is the ability to help manage your lake. Either you're doing it yourself, it helps your consulting firm, or they don't, you don't have to pay them to do phosphorus and nitrogen to have it. You have it, so you can look at your data and say, hey guys, we would like to do this because we're seeing an increase this way or decrease this way. Let's change our plant management. So let's really change our flow of water. That's what it allows you guys to do. It. Do we, is it, does it just give us readings on phosphorus and nitrogen? Phosphorus and nitrogen, color and conductivity, and the algae, biomass. Okay. The reason we do those is one, algae is a primary producer. That produces all the biology activity in that lake. The food web works off of that. But algae uses nitrogen and phosphorus for sunlight. Nitrogen and phosphorus, we need to know. The water clarity is completely related to algae. So that allows us to understand that difference in seeing that. So, like a color lake, if this out here had a two foot secchi but no chlorophyll, but it had high color, I would know it was being stained by tannic acid and it's not algae gone in the system. There's enough nitrogen phosphorus to grow algae, but since that lake is red because of the surrounding environment of the swamp, then I would know that that's a different lake than what you have. You can make your number three station and you can take a sample just like you did before. I do. Do we have to get that thing back though to do? Uh, oh yeah. But next time, when you start doing it again, oh, yeah. your third, you have a third bottle. Okay. So you just put number three on it. Okay. And me and you will know it's the well, not the lake. Okay. Yep. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I like so, that idea. So you could take that okay. every time too. But do the same thing. Fill it up, shake okay. it, dump it out twice, okay. fill it up, dump an inch out, and cap it. Okay. Just like you were doing Love that. the other one. Okay. Anything else we should capture in the recording? Um, just, you know, you got, you, it's so helpful. I, you know, I could watch that. Anybody could take a test now. I'll have, we'll learn, be learning lots over time. You've, you've been doing this for a long time. What we offer now is, as an extension group, you're taking the samples for us. We're getting a great amount of data. It now is going to allow you to help you manage it. But what it also offers is, I can't come manage it for you, but if you call me and say, I have this question and I can't answer it. There's a fisheries professor down the hallway. There's the FWC across the street, the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. There's a limnologist, which is the guy that's our, our boss that studies lakes. I, I got a wealth of knowledge to either go ask or send you to to help you understand. Like your Diquat. If you want to know more about Diquat, I would send you to one of the, the agronomy weed guys at the University of Florida where right down the hall from me, and they could talk to you all day about that. That's if I can't perfect. It, then they could. And that gives you that can not that you don't have that connection as a Florida citizen because they are a university. Yeah, but it's one step closer. Them. Exactly. You can find them through me. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, so you'll help us just give feedback on our lake and then we can turn that and into once a year, act actions. We'll do your report for the lake every December. We stop our database. Not that you stop sampling, but we stop it. We put the data in our files and do what we need to do. And then by the end of January, so 2020, December of 2021, we stop. By January or early February of 2022, the reports are done for the last year's work. Do we get anything back in, do we just get it once a year then? Once a year. You can only get feedback. Call me. Okay. Like, so like say, we take this sample back and you turn some stuff in, I get it in September. You could call me in November and say, could I have the results and I could send them to you. Okay. I can't make the report because of the difficulties, but I can give you the data and talk about it. Okay. So the report is only here. At the beginning, it'll help us to get, you know, the, as soon as we can get feedback, the better to. You really kind of need a couple of years.
years mm -hmm. to really see what trends. Okay. okay. You won't get five. Once we have five years of data, if you're here that long, then we actually start doing statistical work on the planet every year so we can show you if there is trends or not, okay. which way is it going and how much of it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Well, we need that five years just because that's it. <laughs> I want to end the recording with a big thank you. That's tons of information. They can tell you that you know a lot about this. So I'm, I'm excited to work together. Thank you guys then next month on your own. If you have any questions, you can call me. But again, you have to be in the UK. And it's going to be on the website. It's going to be Okay, awesome. So we have two more resources. You guys want to take it from the website. And not just dip it. Yes. Yes. Make sure you rinse it a few times before you fill it up. And then take your sample from the bucket. Well, on behalf of our lake, our ecology, our wildlife, our uh, HOA, <laughs> our community, thank you very is this much. The only lake you guys have? No, we have five. Okay. This is one of five. Oh. Yep. Yep. Well, if they ever decide it doesn't have a dog, then we have to have a dog. Four of them have docks, so yeah. that some we might get more interest, and maybe yeah. someone will adopt. Five, but we could add a couple to get an idea if you know how exactly. the technology goes later on. Start with this one. Yes. Start building that database, and then y'all can decide. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, we so talk, like, well, like say, just a little before, bit on our pond situation. Plants. Yeah. So the lakes can have a couple different systems. It's kind of a stable state theory system where either algae dominates the lake, where you have no plants. And, and virtually you have all free floating phytoplankton, which is your algae. Or you can have a lake that is more an order plant dominated. And those lakes are Dan, I'm going to pause you for one second. Yeah. I'm going to do a different recording on that because it's a little different topic and this is already kind of long. Okay, so we're going to end, complete this one. We're going to stop.